this episode, it's a pleasure to have a chat to John Dobson, obviously well known as, as the current Stormers coach, but uh, a man who's traversed a fairly diverse path since uh, his time at, uh, at this great school. A um, man who's played rugby at Elsie's River, he's uh, played rugby at UCT, which is where our paths crossed socially for the first time. Um, He's gone on to write various books, um, some of them particularly humorous. Had some fantastic success with the, the UCT Ike Tigers, won the Varsity Cup. Uh, got pulled into the, into, the, into the provincial scene where he had excellent success at under 20 level, into the Vodacom Cup, uh, the Curry Cup, won that. Uh, what, a, what a fabulous time that was. And then, then, then got the pinnacle and, uh, you know, current Stormers coach at the most inopportune time <laughs> uh, it is completely crazy you know when 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 not life but i mean certainly a big part of one's life is is, is to is to coach the stormers and it it's taken away rather cruelly um in a in a once in a generation environment with 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 the covid um space right now so it's a great pleasure to have a chat uh, john these circumstances are are particularly strange hence us not sitting around a, a table having a coffee or perhaps a something more, more, more cold. Um, but what we're doing today is uh, we've got some questions in from, from the Bishop's community. And John, I'm gonna put these to you. Um, up front, we've got Jamie Bailey, who's grade eight in White House. He'd like to know, who's your rugby idol? Thanks, Tanky. Uh, it's very nice. very nice to be here and chat to him. Uh, watch, we watched the progress of one Joe Lanning with great, with great enthusiasm, my godson. So. Excited to see how that goes, and I feel sorry for all the schoolboy players. Rugby idol would probably be, um, you guys won't remember, Michael Jones, probably of New Zealand. He was a, a seven, uh, open side flank with a tank, you'll remember him, with enormous skill, who could pass to his left and right at high speed. And I think if your open side flank, uh, your Eddie Jones was talking about Jack Nile playing on the flank, if your open side flank can link, and rather than just be a fetch and create and be that link between backs and forwards, it's very exciting for the game. So. Yeah, Michael Jones was my hero. They called him the Iceman growing up. Yeah. Then in from uh, Nick Steinhagen. He's a grade 10 boy in Founders House. Um, what do you believe is the future for Super Rugby as the fans at games are diminishing across the world? I think it's a, it's a really good question because it's, 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 to me, and I think we've been, Tank and myself and our friends, been discussing over refreshing things for a, year, a few years now, that this product is... You know, if Huddersfield played Stoke in a in an English Premiership game, um, it's a, you know, I'd rather listen. I'd rather watch, yeah, you know, <laughs> I could rather watch lots of other things, uh, paint drying and all that. But there's the, the stadium is full and there are people singing and there's an atmosphere. At some stage, the people who fund rugby, which is the broadcasters, are going to say this looks ridiculous. Three thousand people at the Sydney Football Stadium, or or five thousand people as the Stormers Loftus a couple of years ago got. You know, it looks absolutely ridiculous, and that's not a product. So when we may lose the spectators already, at some stage the TV guys have to wake up to it. So the, to me the most important thing for rugby now, without doubt, is getting competitions that get people back into the stadia. Um, they're doing it in the Northern Hemisphere uh, reasonably well and we are falling off the cliff here in the South. Um, I think it's got to do with competition format and you know the Super Rugby and we all remember Super 12. Uh, one round, semi-final, final, over by the end of May and that would pack people out. So we've got to look at the format, um, whether that's still, I think the, the noise from Australia and New Zealand is getting too loud now of them wanting to go on their own, which I think will be a big mistake by them. And much sure it's easy because we pay, South Africa pays for most of Super Rugby in terms of our broadcasting revenues and the biggest crowd. Certainly the Stormers are the biggest crowd, the biggest supported team, most jerseys bought in Super Rugby. So I think it might be short-sighted by Australia and New Zealand if they want to go their own way. Um, we're going to be under increasing, we are under increasing pressure to move into the Northern Hemisphere. I think that the future for the short term is uh, Super Rugby stays, gets down to 12 teams, plays a semi plays it in one block where people understand, not these conferences where you like last year the Sharks could finish eighth and still play in a playoff, which is ridiculous, which rewards mediocrity. And so I think that Super Rugby will stay, it's going to reduce the number of teams. And I think on a bigger scale, we need to look to touring. You know, the All Blacks playing against to playing against uh, Southern universities and that's sort of the touring here for three months would be a much more attractive option. I think we've done this out to ourselves. Um, you know, the fact that the viewership numbers are relatively good shows that there's still interest in the product, there's interest in the sports, you know, the viewership numbers haven't dropped off. It's the fact that we have, aren't offering a product that's compelling enough for people to actually come into the stadiums. 
because it's a bit of a sermon, sorry, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it short. <laughs>